So today I have a huge, huge, huge Christmas book haul. These are all the books I got for Christmas. Um, all I got were books for Christmas, so that's why I have so many books. And I also treated myself to a lot of these books. I decided to separate these into genres. I am doing manga, nonfiction, fiction, and YA, so you can just skip ahead to what you're interested in. So let's just get started because I have a lot of books to haul. Um, so the first one I have here is um, this cat diary that I was missing from my manga collection. If you can see over here, I have all of Junji Ito's um, other mangas. So that's one I was missing. And and also I have Shiver, another one I was missing. I think after this I'll have all of his mangas. And this is the last one that came out. This one came out um, I think a few days before Christmas. I don't think I've seen a lot of people read this one or mention this one, but it just came out and it says an unknown planet emerges from inside a wormhole. The illustrations in this are just always so cool and I'm just always excited to um, look at the art and read this. So I'm really excited to read those three and that will complete my Junji Ito collection. I think I own everything he's come out with now. So the next books I'll show you are the nonfiction books and as you all know if you've been watching my channel I love reading nonfiction so I have uh, quite a few here. I think I have more nonfiction than fiction maybe. I'm not sure but here we go. Let's start because there's a lot. I have A Promised Land by Barack Obama. This is one I really, really wanted and I know a lot of you are already reading it or have already read it at this point, but I haven't read it yet so I think I will be reading this in February. So I actually have quite a few books by some indigenous authors that I've been wanting. This is the first one, The Mason House. This actually came out recently and it is a memoir by an indigenous author and I'm really excited to read this one. I'm actually like really, really into memoirs. I actually have another a memoir up here by an indigenous author. I don't think you can see it, but it's it's gonna be in my other haul from the ashes, so That's one I'm excited for too, but this one is another one and I'm really excited for it and it seems pretty short so Excited to read that. The next one I have is The Inconvenient Indian, A Curious Account of Native People in North America, so Excited to read that one. So this is a memoir by an indigenous author and it looks like Tommy Orange blurbed it and I don't know much about it. I just love memoirs and I saw it so I thought I would get it. Um, yeah, I love the cover and I'm excited to read this one. Um, this is another one that I've been wanting for a really long time and this one is by an indigenous author I'm pretty sure and it's Highway of Tears. This one is a true story of racism, indifference, and the pursuit of justice for missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. And that's a topic that I'm really, really interested in. There's a book that I read before that I really enjoyed and it was called Red River Girl. And it was about missing and murdered um, indigenous women. Highly recommend that one if you haven't read it. And this seems like along the same lines, so. I'm interested in reading that. So the next book we have is Midnight in Chernobyl. This one's like a really backlisted book. I have a lot of backlisted books that you've probably seen before, but I just never showed them. So this one is the story of the world's greatest nuclear disaster. You probably saw the Chernobyl show and you've probably read this book probably at this point, but I haven't read it yet, so I'm excited to read it. Another one, um, my husband got me this and he's like, you should read this one first out of all the books I gave you. And it's The Great Influenza, The Story of the Deadliest Pandemic in History. I'm just really fascinated by like medical mysteries I've realized like in the nonfiction genre and just reading about medicine and like pandemics or diseases. Really interested to read this one. It looks really good and I'll probably pick it up soon. I'm also really into cooking so I have a few memoirs by some chefs and I have Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. I never got to read this so I thought it would be the perfect time to get it for Christmas so I got that one and everyone's probably read that one already. This one I haven't seen anyone talk about but this one is called Life on the Line. So he was on Chef's Table if you haven't seen that show on Netflix but I was just really intrigued to read more about his life because 
he had cancer and overcame that so really interested to read this one this is another one that's been on my wish list for a long time and it was a death in the rainforest how a language and a way of life came to an end in papua new guinea so this one is about this anthropologist so over the course of 30 years he keeps returning again and again and again to this village to document um, the language before it disappeared entirely so I'm really interested in that type of stuff too. If you're new here, you pro you're probably seeing a bunch of stuff here that you probably haven't seen all over Booktube because I'm just interested in like such a huge diverse range of topics that I will read anything except you won't find self-help on this channel because I don't know, I just cannot get into self-help so. A new one I have here that I've never really read before. Um, this wasn't on any type of wish list, but it was just a book I was gifted, and it is Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. And this is not something I would normally buy because I don't really, I don't think I've ever read a celebrity memoir. I do have the Elton John memoir, so I guess that counts. That's the only celebrity memoir that I have. I just heard that this was um, really, really, really well written. And I've seen some people here on booktube that aren't into celebrity memoirs and are more into literary fiction. And they've read this and said it was amazing. So that really piqued my interest because if they said it was amazing, then it must be. And it's just a really beautiful book, I must say. I'm really surprised. That's the front. That's the back. It says, just keep living. And then it feels like that buttery cover. And then the inside pages have the pictures. So that's nice. I'm excited to read it. It was a total surprise. I didn't expect to get that book, but I am excited that I got it because it is a really, really nice looking book. <laughs> the next one I have here, I'm really excited too, and my husband was also like, you should read that first, and it's Spillover, Animal Infections and the Next Human Pandemic. So yeah, I'm excited for that one. The next one I have here, I haven't seen anything about anywhere, so I don't know if it'll be good or not, but it was really intriguing. And it's Under a Flaming Sky, The Great Hinkley Firestorm of 1894. It was a fire where uh, more than 2,000 people lost their lives, and it burned over 350 acres in one week. So it is one of North America's most destructive fires. So I'm excited for that one. It seems way shorter than I thought it would be too. This is a book I treated myself with and I hadn't heard about it before and it's A Year with the Waterman and Vanishing uh, Tangier Island, Chesapeake Requiem it's called. So this one sounds really good. It says, a brilliant, soulful, and urgent portrait of a 200 year old crabbing community in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay as it faces extinction, making it the front line of the coming climate crisis. So I think it's going to be talking about climate change a lot. So the next book is The Puzzle Solver and this one I received from Hatchet and this one sounds really good. I specifically requested this one because it just sounds right up my alley. It's a non-fiction medical mystery and it says a scientist's desperate quest to cure the illness that stole his son. So his son all of a sudden gets super super sick and they realize that it's chronic fatigue syndrome and he's diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue syndrome sounds like it's not that serious but it could lead you to not even be able to get out of bed, not be able to speak, not hear certain sounds and see certain colors because you're really really sensitive to those kind of things too. So I'm just learning so much from this book. I'm currently reading it and you can already see that I'm tabbing it. But so far I really recommend it. And Stephanie Schrotty, I think that's how I say it, the author of The Perfect Predator, blurbed it. And I loved that book. So that is another nonfiction medical mystery if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Definitely recommend it. It's almost like you're reading a thriller, kind of or a mystery book and you're trying to figure something out but it's nonfiction. So I just think that's so much fun, but also really, really sad. So prepare yourself for that. This is already really sad. And yeah, you'll probably hear more about this in my January wrap up since I'm reading it right now. So now we'll go through the YA. I just have five YA books here. And the first one is Dear Justice. This one I treated myself to, it was really good. I actually already read it and you'll see it in my December wrap up. Really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I think it's like a hit or miss with sequels most of the time, but this was a hit and I will, like I said, talk about it more in my December wrap up. 
This next one I have is Piecing Me Together, and I think actually this is a middle grade, not a YA, but Max at Well Done Books, um, I think he gave this one five stars, and I really trust his recommendations. Um, he's not on BookTube anymore, but yeah, I always trust his recommendations, and he really liked that one. So the next one is Jackpot by Nick Stone. I just really like Nick Stone's writing, and I don't like a lot of YA, but I like her, so... I will give this one a shot. And then the next one my friend Ashley sent to me. I will link her channel down below. This is a different a Ashley than the one I buddy read stuff with. This is Ashley B. And I've been actually following her on BookTube. Before I even made my BookTube channel, I was a fan of her channel. So she's been on here for a really long time and we've been friends for a while. And yeah, she sent me this one and I already read this one. It was such a good read. I will leave my review down below. I gave it five stars. I don't read that much YA, so that's really saying a lot. I talked about this in my wrap up. I think it was my November wrap up. I will link it down below too if you wanna go check out the wrap up where I, I feel like growing up as a Latina and playing soccer, like it was just so relatable. So really, really love this book and I'm really glad to own it now. So that was all the YA I had. Next I have just regular fiction and um so yeah let's just hurry up and get into this because this video is getting really long i have the invisible life of eddie larue i'm probably the only person that hasn't read this yet but my other friend actually hasn't read this yet so i think we might buddy read that one and then i have leviathan wakes I am not a regular like sci-fi reader or fantasy reader, but this is the book that I picked for my in real life book club for our Zoom meeting. And I kind of stepped out of my comfort zone and chose this because we don't read a lot of sci-fi and I'm the one that picks the book. So I thought, okay, um, we should probably read, you know, something else outside of my comfort zone. So this one I've seen all over booktube. It sounds really good. It says humanity has colonized the solar system, Mars, the moon, the asteroid belt, and beyond, but the stars are still out of our reach. And that's kind of what grabbed me in the beginning. I did sample the first chapter of this to make sure that it would be something that I would actually read. So that's why I bought it and treated myself for Christmas. This next one I saw, why am I forgetting her channel? I like love watching her channel, but I will link it down below. I'm so bad at remembering things, but I am trying to remember what her channel is. Uh, I forgot, but she's been raving about this book. She had it in her top favorite books of the year. Like I said, I will link your channel down below because I'm blanking right now. But this is The Rage of Dragons. I've seen a lot of people read this already and it is fantasy. And I am not a big fantasy reader, but I did read the first Game of Thrones book. So it did say Game of Thrones meets Gladiator. So that caught my attention because I did like the Game of Thrones book. So the next book I have is Deacon King Kong. I thought I would buy this because I have been meaning to read this since it came out and I just never got to it. But I have been seeing it on a lot of lists on Bookstagram and Obama had it on his list too. So I thought I would just own it because I feel like I'm really going to love it. And I sampled the first chapter too, just to make sure that it was something that I liked. And that's what I've been doing lately a lot is sampling the first chapter or listening to a minute or two or so of the audiobook if I can't sample a chapter. And I think that really helps me with buying too. So I'm just not just buying anything that I hear is hyped up. I'm like sampling a chapter to make sure that it's something that I'll actually read. This one I also treated myself to. It's called Missionaries by Phil Clark. Play. He is the author of Redeployment. That was a book I really enjoyed I think in 2018 or 17 and it was a book of short stories I believe. Really really like that one and that one was military related of course because it was called redeployment but this one is also military related but it just sounds really good it's a group of colombian soldiers prepares to raid a drug lord safe house on the venezuelan border and that just drew me in because i don't need to know anymore um that just sounds like it's going to be really thrilling the next one i got was firestarter it seems to me that i like the stephen king books that have to do with powers um, like the kids have powers 
or the people have powers so I thought I would get this one I don't know much about it but I thought I would get it. The next one I have here is The Power of the Dog. Not one I would normally buy either, but one of my friends gave this five stars and she said she highly recommended it. So this one says, Art Keller is an obsessive DEA agent. The Barrera brothers run a drug empire. Nora Hayden is a jaded teenager who becomes a high class hooker. Father Parada is a powerful and incorruptible Catholic priest. Callan is an Irish kid from Hell's Kitchen who grows up to be a merciless hitman. They are all trapped in the world of the Mexican drug um, federacion and the rise of the cartels. From the streets of New York City to Mexico City and Tijuana to the jungles of Central America, this is the first two decades of the war on drugs like you've never seen it. So that just sounds really good. So I'm excited for that one. It kind of sounds like up Missionary's Alley. Another Stephen King that I'm excited for that I've been meaning to read because the Hulu show is out. And I've seen a lot of people say that this is their favorite Stephen King book. Stephen King really is a hit or miss for me. Um, his hits are really, I think there's only like four or five that I've actually really liked. So I'm hoping this is a hit because I bought, I bought it, but it is really, really long. So we'll see. Um, these next two books Ashley also sent me, Ashley B. I will link Ashley and Ashley B's channel down below. Um, Ashley B is Ashley's Got Book Excitement, and Ashley is just Ashley Reads, I believe. Yeah, so she sent me His Only Wife. Excited for this one. I've been seeing it around. It sounds really good. This one is about this girl that's convinced by her mother to marry a man she doesn't know. So usually like one sentence or two kind of grabs me in the synopsis, and that's what grabbed me. So I'm excited to read that one. So then I have an arc of um, the Authenticity Project. This one sounds really good too. It says a solitary green notebook brings together six strangers and leads to unexpected friendship, even love. And then I have Parable of the Sower. I really, really loved Kindred by Octavia Butler. So I'm excited to read this one. Actually, I'm really surprised that they had John Green blurb this because I didn't think that it would be something he would read but I really like I said I really loved Kindred and I am determined to read all of Octavia Butler's books so I'm excited to read that one this one Donna got for me which was so nice of her it was so unexpected she got me The Green Mile by Stephen King I will also link her channel down below she's a booktuber I love her channel and she makes the most beautiful bullet journal spreads and digital spreads so definitely check her out this is another book by an indigenous author it's called five little indian i think this one is about these kids experience at a residential school and i think this is a canadian book as well so i'm excited to read that one and then this one is the house in the cerulean sea i've been seeing a lot a lot of good things about this one five stars from everyone it says a magical island, a dangerous task, a burning secret. And that kind of drew me in too. This is not something I would usually pick up, but because so many people that I trust gave it five stars, I thought I would get it. And I will be buddy reading this with Kayla. I will link Kayla's channel down below because she also has a booktube channel. The last book I have here is The Last Thing You Surrender. And this one came highly recommended from Dee Dee. Um, she is brown girl reading. We've also been friends for a really long time since I started my channel, I think like seven or eight years ago. I will link her channel down below if you haven't seen her channel, but she makes really incredible reviews about books. I feel like you don't see a lot of good reviews from booktubers nowadays. I mean, you won't see it from me because I'm just not good at remembering things and expressing myself the way I want to when I am on camera. So if you wanna go check out some good reviews, definitely check out her channel. But she said this was amazing, five stars, and she really enjoyed it. And this is historical fiction. Again, not something that I would usually pick up, but it did sound really interesting. It says it follows three characters from the Jim Crow South as they face the enormous changes World War II triggers in the US. So that kind of got me because just looking at it, I wouldn't pick it up, but that kind of drew me in. I forgot I had uh, another book to haul. It's called Thin Air, and I had previously read, um, what was it, Dark Matter by Michelle Pover, and it was kind of like a ghost story, but this is supposed to be kind of something similar, and it's a ghost story, and it takes place in the Arctic, I think, or the Himalayas, so really excited to read this one. So those are all the books. <laughs> 
I have a lot of videos coming out. I'm going to have a December wrap up, a January TBR, some vlogs. Um, I also want to do reading the highest rated fantasy books on my shelf, sci-fi books on my shelf, um, and reading the lowest rated books on my shelf. I think those videos are so much fun and I thought I would do it myself. Um, I also really am excited to come out with my anticipated 2021 reads. I've decided to separate it by like every two months because there's so many books I'm excited for. So look out for that too.